Let's meet our clamp contestants for today. Up top here, we have our three different clamps rated at 600 pounds each by Irwin, DeWalt, and Bessie. Over to my left and to my right, we have four different clamps rated at 300 pounds of pressure by Irwin, DeWalt, Bessie, and Jorgensen. Down here across the bottom, we have actually three different offerings from Harbor Freight, including their newest product, which is the Bremen, rated at 375 in the blue and orange. We have two different Pittsburghs. We have the 287 pound rated clamp, as well as the $6 favorite here. This is one of the ones I'm most curious to see how it does. This one is not rated for any particular weight. And over here on your left, we have the Wood River, rated at 180 pounds. And last but not least, the Bessie Duo Clamp. Now when it comes to special features, eight of these have really nothing out of the ordinary. They're just standard clamps, they do their job, but four of them do have some special features worth looking at. The Irwin 600 pounder has a couple of cool features. Number one, it's got pivoting heads on both sides and you can actually pull those pivots off and just replace the pad directly if you need that straight perpendicular pad. The other nice feature is it has a little stand, so if you do want to hang the trigger end of your clamp off the edge of a table like this, it can stand upright on that little stand and the other end of the clamp. Pretty convenient. Its little brother, the Irwin 300 pounder, has one of those pivots on the outside end, but not on the inside, and does not come with the stand. The Jorgensen has one really special feature up its sleeve, and that is that you can replace the ends like this, swap them around, and then those two pieces fit together like puzzle pieces, making one huge clamp. So with that, the two trigger ends come apart and you get a 54 and 5 8 inch clamp when you put two of these together. That is a pretty sweet feature. The Bessie Duo Clamp has several things going for it. It's called the Duo Clamp because it has pads on both sides of the bar, which is really convenient. You can use it to push or pull, and then my favorite thing about this by far, and the reason I go to this one quite a bit, is because of the orientation or ergonomics of the trigger. It's in a great spot. Additionally, you can actually just twist this knob right here to make it go forward or backwards for spreading or clamping. It's a pretty cool set altogether. The next thing I wanted to figure out is how many squeezes does it take to get to the center of the lot to uh, travel 24 inches is what I was going for. So I marked the exact spot on the bar where it was in one spot, pulled the trigger completely, and then marked how far it had moved after I moved my head. So on the Irwin, you'd need to squeeze the trigger 165 times to move 24 inches. On the Bessie, also 165. The DeWalt, again, 165. The Bremen requires 91 squeezes. The Irwin 300, 74 squeezes. The Bessie 300, 118 squeezes. The DeWalt 300, 70 squeezes. The Jorgensen 300, 84 squeezes. The Harbor Freight Pittsburgh only needs 44 squeezes. We may have a winner here, ladies and gentlemen. The Bessie Duo, 97 squeezes. The Wood River, 123. And the Harbor Freight $6 clamp, 62 squeezes. So for results, all three of the 600 pounders tied at last place with 163 squeezes and the Pittsburgh Heavy Duty wins with only needing 44 squeezes to travel 24 inches. Next, we're going to test what I call slide ability for lack of a more scientific term. But basically, a lot of us keep our clamps on racks or shelves like this and you want the ability to squeeze on, in on the release and then put that up like that, hold it in place and then pull it off pretty easy too. So you want it to be slidable or have great slideability. Sure, that works. So since we've got the Irwin here, let's show this one off and see what it can do. This is the Irwin 600 and it can go kind of tight, but actually those pivoting, those pivoting heads make it a little tricky to get tight. So this one falls out of line with all of its neighbors here because of that. That said, it moves pretty comfortably. And this one tends to move on its own. Fine once it gets going. No, I mean, this one does not want to go. Here's the DeWalt 300 pounder. All right, time for the Jorgensen. Piece of cake. Oh no, don't disappoint me. Oh, this is too rough, not slidable. But the idea, the concept of being able to do it like this uh, is perfect. It's the most ergonomic design, but this thing doesn't slide. <laughs> it's doing nothing, okay then it goes in pretty good. Now one tip on these is you can actually lube these. You can use some WD-40 and that shouldn't affect the ability of it to actually clamp down on something. A lot of people worry about that. You should be able to put some lube on these bars and help it to slide along a little better. Next up, let's see if the clamp force rating on each of these clamps lives up to its claims. Like this one, for example, this DeWalt says 300 pounds over there. So we're gonna see if it can actually pull 300 pounds. 
Now to do that, I've got this really high tech and super well done jig here. Despite my many minutes of welding experience, these welds look like total trash. So if you feel like, you know, making fun of those in the comments, you're welcome to, cause it deserves it. But on the bright side, it actually holds up. I've tested this and it works pretty well. And it adds a little sense of, you know, surprise here. Maybe one of these welds will snap off altogether and we'll have an explosion or some sort. We'll see. Keep in mind though, with clamping, uh, 300 pounds is more than you need for most glue ups, for example, for woodworking. So softwoods like this pine here, for example, typically only need about 100 PSI, maybe 150 at most. And then a hardwood like this walnut here, 175 to 250 is all you need for that. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. There's two other things we're testing at the same time here. Let's see how much these things bow because we don't want a huge massive bow going on. The second thing we'll test is how hard is it to release? So let's see how it goes. Okay, we're gonna start out with the Irwin 600 pounder. Let's see how many pounds of force this thing can pull. And let's get started. All right, we're already at 350. And when I let go, it does drop a little bit slowly. I mean, kind of slowly. We're already down about, we're down to 345. Very interesting. So it doesn't retain that same pressure that whole time. Let's keep going and see what we get. 550. Okay, we just went over 600 for a second, but then it drops quickly. Okay, we went over 600 again, 597. Let's see if we can get it to where it actually... Okay, we are seeing that bowing in the bar that I talked about. Okay, that went up to over 630, and it's sitting at 625 right now. Uh, error. Oh, wow. I wonder if this one peaks at 650. I think it does. Uh, yeah, 670. Okay, this is sitting at 668 right now. Very difficult to squeeze. And definitely bowing quite a bit. And let's see if it comes down to the 670 range or not. That means we're over 670. All right, there's our arc on the, on the bar. Now, in order to measure how much deflection or bowing we got with the bars on each of these, when they were under their max load, I took a screenshot of each of those at that point. Now, keep in mind the camera is the exact same distance away from the bars in each case. And so I was able to take that into Photoshop, draw a straight line from one end to the other to see what it should be. And then I used a measuring tool to measure how many pixels away that was from the straight line at its greatest distance. I could then compare that to each of the others and put it on a scale to see which ones bowed the most or the least. The Irwin, in this case, came up with a deflection of 26, putting it in the better half of the clamps. Now, the next thing we'll test is the release. I hope this thing does, oh, wow, we're at 680 something. Okay, so this one goes over 680. And so definitely holds up to its uh, 600 pound rating. I'm a little afraid to do this, but here we go. Ooh, this, is, this is hard, this is a two-hander. <laughs> Definitely a lot of force to release at 680 plus pounds, but it did the job and well surpassed the 600 pound rating. Now I put together this quick infographic for each of the clamps, including a bunch of stuff that I measured off screen that we're not gonna include in the video to keep this thing from being like 240 minutes long. So you can see on the clamping force, this one rated in at 114% of its reported capacity with 680 pounds or 309 kilos. It's got a couple of cool bonus features. Slideability on this one we recorded at above average. Deflection, a little above average like we just talked about. Squeezes per 24 inches, as bad as it gets. It takes forever to travel. Releaseability on this one was dead average with a five. And then the comfort on this one was just slightly above average. You can see some other specs on the bottom in case you're interested and I'll show those with each of the clamps, but you can get full details on all of this on my website at learntodiy.com. Links are in the description. Next, we're gonna work on the Bessie 600 pounder. That was quick. We just passed six. Okay, this one moves a lot faster as far as getting up to that full pressure. Okay, I think this one is basically about the same as the Irwin. This one can go over 680. There we go. Got a decent little bow going on. Now, let's test out our release here. This is. Notice the trigger is kind of loose to start with. Here we go. Please let go. Ooh, geez, that freaks me out. Okay, uh, hold on, I gotta go change.
The Bessie 600 also scored 114% of its reported capacity with 680 pounds, no bonus features, slightly below average slideability, above average deflection, again some of the worst squeeze rates out there, average releaseability, and super high on the comfort level. Next up, let's test the DeWalt 600 pounder. It'll go over what it uh, claims by quite a bit. Actually, I'm really curious. My crappy welds are, you know, they're holding up. I'm happy with that. This one's on the edge of the bar, so that's easier, but this little piece here is a, a real piece of work. All right, here we go. Let's release this and see how it goes. Woo. Okay. That was actually the easiest one to release. So for what it's worth, at full pressure, the release bar on the DeWalt was the easiest so far. The DeWalt 600, very similar to the prior two, 114% of reported capacity, no bonus features, above average on the slideability, slightly above average on deflection, bottom of the barrel on squeezes per 24 inches, average releaseability, and very above average when it comes to comfort. This is one I'm probably most curious about. We're gonna test the Bremen from Harbor Freight, rated for 375 pounds. Now it's using all my wrist power, which is like six pounds worth. Uh, 230, go Harbor Freight. I love it when the cheap stuff actually does okay. I kind of root for it like the underdog. My weak little body can't handle it. 429. Yeah, basically we're capping out around 430. But for a rating of 375, not too bad. So 430, we've got some serious arc going on here. And then let's test out the release. Ah, there we go. That one was not as bad actually as I thought. Okay, so that, that release was uncomfortable because uh, it's just bar metal like most of these, but it did pretty good. The Bremen had almost the exact same reported capacity as the prior three with 115%. Again, no bonus features, above average slideability, really poor on the deflection. This one, the bar bent the most. Squeezes per 24 inches was slightly above average, releaseability also slightly above average, and also slightly above average on the comfort. When it comes to price, the Bremen actually comes in at just over half of most of its competitors. Next, we're gonna try the Irwin 300 pounder. This is like my workout of the week here, 404. I just worked out last year. I don't know why I'm doing this. So I'm learning that there is kind of a threshold for these. You kind of get to a point where you squeeze all you want and it can't really get any more out of it. So 430 in this case, pretty darn good. Let's test the trigger release on this guy. Here we go. I hate this. <laughs> ah, Maybe I can't. All right. Do I need a rig? I need, oh, you know what? I got some clamps here. Is this dorky or what? I'm gonna use a clamp to release a clamp. You know, desperate times. Here we go. Yeah, that's the way to go. That's so much easier. <laughs> Woo! Okay. So the Irwins are pretty jolting to release for sure on that trigger release. The Irwin 300 has our best reported capacity so far at 143% of what it claims. It does have the one pivoting pad as a bonus feature, not very slidable at all. This one was pretty tricky. Deflection was pretty average. Squeezes per 24 inches was above average. Releaseability also pretty difficult and totally average when it comes to comfort. Next is the Bessie 300 pounder. One thing I'm noticing on this is that because these clamps are closer together, the triggers here, the handles, it's easier. Like it feels more comfortable. I don't feel like I'm having to spread my hands way out. So I'd say that's a bonus point for the Bessie here. This is as much workout as I get. Oh, we're up 436 here. Now, again, we've got this guy here for the release. Let's see how difficult this is. Whoa, that was super easy. Holy cow. I wasn't ready for that. Okay, so, so far the release on the Bessie is by far the easiest, and that was under max load, so that's pretty impressive. The Bessie 300 comes in at 145% of its reported capacity. No bonus features to speak of, extremely slidable. This one worked great in that sense. Very average deflection, slightly below average for squeezes per 24 inch. Great releaseability, easiest one yet. And as far as comfort, this one is definitely on the high side as far as being comfortable as well. Next up, we have the DeWalt 300 pound setup. 424. So actually very comparable to the other ones we saw. Not too bad at all. Now let's test the release on the DeWalt. 
Seriously, let's test the release on the DeWalt. <laughs> Got it. That was about all my might though. I almost couldn't do it. The DeWalt 300 also comes in well above its reported capacity with 141% there. No bonus features to speak of. Slideability was not great on this one. Deflection was just barely below average. Squeezes per 24 inches, this one travels pretty decently, above average. Slightly below average on releaseability. And then the Comfort was also doing pretty well. Next up is the Jorgensen 300 pounder. Whoa, this is a beast, 590. We're sitting at 590 on this thing. It's rated for 300 pounds, oh my gosh. Let's see how the trigger release goes. Easy, okay, impressive. That was really easy to release. Went way past its range and was pretty strong. That's pretty cool. The Jorgensen 300 is the best one we've seen so far as far as what it claims to actually be able to squeeze and what it does. 190% of reported capacity. It does have that super cool interlocking design, so a nice bonus feature. It's super slidable. This one is about as good as it gets when it comes to mounting this thing onto a rack. Deflection is pretty average. Squeezes per 24 inches, above average. Releaseability, also quite a bit above average. And it's super comfortable as well. Next up, this one I'm super curious about. This is the Pittsburgh that's rated for 287 pounds. These things are dirt cheap, so I'm, that's why I'm curious to see what it can do. 343, I think that's about where we're peeking out. This thing's rocking up into the, whoa. Now what was that? Oh, you know what? I think this just, oh look, I broke it. That's actually kind of exciting. <laughs> All right, here we go, here's the brake. Check it out. So I broke right up here at the head and it was at about 480 when it did that. I'll check on the playback, but definitely took it way past. But this is our first break, it's kind of exciting. So snap the plastic right there, reveal the weakness. So did it do everything it's supposed to and more? Yes, uh, but it did have a breaking point of course. So rest in peace little guy. So the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh 287 pounder came in at 120% of its reported capacity. No bonus features, extremely slidable, did great there. Excellent deflection. This had the most stiff bar of all of the ones we tried. The squeezes per 24 inches, also best in class. This one moves and you don't have to sit there squeezing a thousand times to get it into position. Releaseability, we weren't able to test that of course because the thing snapped. Comfort, slightly above average. So pretty interesting results for the Harbor Freight Pittsburgh. Next, we're gonna try the Bessie, and this is rated at 280 pounds, but remember, I couldn't get this in the 24 inch, so I'm just testing out the 18 inch. So I've got a little extension piece with a carabiner on here. No idea what this carabiner is rated for, but let's find out. I'm gonna zero out our scale, and here we go. This is so much con more convenient, by the way, this design, I love this. So I think that's about where we're going to stop here is 308. Uh, not bad. So this, that's uh, 28 pounds more than it's rated for. Let's test the release now. Now again with this release, it's right up here on the thumb area. Very curious how hard this will be. Ugh. Not a one-handed thing at full pressure. Oh, but not too bad with two. That was actually easier than I thought. The Bessie Duo Clamp came in at 110% of its reported capacity, making it the least amount of all of the other ones as far as actual capacity versus reported, but all of them at least surpass the reported capacity by 10%. This one has some killer features on it and is by far the most comfortable to use in my opinion because of that angle of the trigger. The slideability was not great. It could use a lot of help there. Deflection, we didn't really get to test on this one because of the 18 inch versus 24. Squeezes per 24 inches, it was pretty average. Releaseability, above average. And comfort, easily the most comfortable one to use in my opinion. Next up is the Wood River 180 pound rated clamp. So 414 on a 180 pound rated clamp, I'd say that passes the test. So pretty good. Let's see on the release here. Pretty easy. Okay, very impressive. Way to go Wood River. This one was a surprise. This one came in at 230% of its reported capacity. 
No bonus features to speak of, extremely slidable, it hangs up really nicely. Deflection was pretty average, squeezes per 24 inches could be better, so definitely below average there. Releasability, absolutely above average, and also more comfortable than most. All right, this is probably the one I'm most excited about. This is the $6 clamp. What do you get for six bucks? Let's put this thing in and find out. This thing looks just cheap and pathetic in all the ways, but is it? We're at 243. Let's see if we can get this thing to 250. I believe in you. Come on, little Harbor Freight $6 guy. Okay, my belief is limited. It's not, uh, my faith is not strong enough. Let's see. Let's use your cousin here to help you out. Okay, we're at 350. Now, obviously I haven't released, but I'm just... Ah, yes. Was curious if that would happen. <laughs> Whew. Okay, I got my heart rate going for the day, both in uh, squeezing all these clamps and in, you know, jump scares. There we go. So this one um, is definitely dead, but it went way past what it probably should do. So I think it broke at somewhere around 350. I'll watch the playback to verify, but check this out. We've got, we've got parts everywhere and no Nilses were injured in this video. So at least not yet. Okay, Harbor Freight's little $6 clamp came in at definitely above what we maybe would have expected with 243 pounds. And again, it didn't claim any certain number in its advertising. Bonus features, really nothing to speak of. Slideability, just above average. Deflection, just above average. Squeezes per 24 inches, one of the easiest ones to use in that sense. Releasability, we didn't get a chance to test that one before it exploded. And as far as comfort, this one's slightly less comfortable than most. Now, because I had all this data, I had to see just out of curiosity, what does it look like as far as pounds of pressure per dollar that you get? So as you can see here, Harbor Freight is definitely kicking butt in that aspect. There's so many other things to take into consideration here, but I thought you might be interested in seeing exactly how this plays out. Again, you can see a full chart of all of the compared specs, one against the other, on my website at learntodiy.com. Well, I'd say that was a success. I only wet myself three times and we broke two clamps, but we got some real good measurements on everything else. Now, the big question is, and leave this in the comments below, which clamp would you buy after seeing that? Love to hear about it. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.